Kaboom! Tonight on B Movie Mania. <laughs> <laughs> Explosion! Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B Movie Mania! And now, B Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult. Your cinematic creepy uncles, Paul Brooks, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Hello, listeners, and welcome to B-Movie Mania, your explosively bad movie-themed podcast. Uh, I'm your host for the evening, Michael Hayes, and along with me are the usual maniacs, Christopher Crazy Hudson. Is that how it goes? <laughs> Jason Holes. <laughs> Paul Brooks. Explosion sound. And Mr. Guest for the Night Day, I guess whenever you're listening to this, John Nix. <laughs> uh, for the listener out there, I guess we haven't said the name of this episode yet, <laughs> though you saw the title, I'm sure, of that podcast work. Uh, but we watched Hologram Man. <laughs> yeah, so so I, let's just get this out of the way right away. Uh, you know the couple these main maniacs, and P- Paul, as you probably heard by his voice, is, is a weird hologram. Um, hologram. A hologram, that's good! <laughs> 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 yeah, um, but we have a special guest. Uh, John Nix is with us this week. Uh, John, h- how d- how about saying hello without an explosion sound? Uh, hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, happy to I'm have you on. to be on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're happy to have you on, man. Yeah, we'll get into some of your stuff. But John is a filmmaker that does you know has done a, a handful of awesome stuff. Uh, you have a Turnstile Films is your production company, is that right? Yeah, yeah, I'm one of the five founders of Turnstile Films from Cleveland, Ohio. Beautiful. Well, we we usually make our listeners listen to the entire episode before they get that info. Well, so, I good was job, about, Mike. I, <laughs> now, now they can turn the shit off. No, I'm going to tease them with a little bit of John has a film company and he's done some cool stuff. But we're going to wait to the end for those proper plugs, my boy. Oh, don't you worry. You are two steps ahead of me. <laughs> Maybe just a step and a half. Um, so, but why don't we jump right into this son of a bitch and get some quick takes? Quick takes. All right, Hudson, since you're so gung-ho for everything, uh, please explode your quick take on me. Oh, my God. Do I really need to? You know, everyone should know by now what my quick take is going to be. What do is I, it? Do I... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jason Holes. Uh, to, to quote the villain of the film Slash Gallagher, I really enjoyed that. <laughs> 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 and John, what would you, what's your quick take? I, it's uh, I liked it, but I, I'm very tired. <laughs> like, there's just a lot of explosions. <laughs> this is a very tiring movie. Oh, yeah. I it takes mean, a while to get through. I don't even know what even to to say either. Like it's oh, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> So hey Mike, uh, can I uh-huh. can I take a guess at um, why you chose this movie? Sure. I think you are a big fan of Richard Pepin. <laughs> Am I? Do I wait? I don't know if I recognize his his name. Well, what you recognize his work because he was in addition to producing this. Uh, actually, I think he directed this. Did he not? He directed this. Yeah. Did he directed this? He also produced Little Big Fight. No, oh, fuck God. you. Did he? Oh, my God. He totally did. <laughs> oh. Holy shit. I had no idea. And yes, then I am a very big fan. <laughs> That's a really wide spectrum. It, it really, really is. is. <laughs> Mike, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't you call yourself a little oh. big fan? <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> He's going for that, like, George Miller spectrum of Mad Max and Happy Feet. <laughs> you know, yeah. That was his babe picking the city. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, that would probably be Little Bigfoot too. You know, if we're gonna stick with sequels, even. Uh, <laughs> I guess we should start at the beginning for this movie. No, actually, wait. I think we should start at, at why we keep making exploding noises, which would instantly bring me into what I think is the best drinking rule of any movie ever. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Are we counting the sex scenes as explosions? <laughs> I may need I to revise my count. <laughs> you must have watched the YouTube version. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, so so quickly, there are two versions of this movie. Amazon's got one uh, that has no sex scene in it. And then you, YouTube has one that's got like a minute and a half long sex scene. <laughs> hey, you know what? <laughs> we'll get into this more, I'm sure, and, and when we go through it in, in yeah. order. But that's a way to introduce a villain. <laughs> oh, it so is. Like, just going to town. If, if Yeah, that's a way to explode yourself into the scene. Um, <laughs> but that's ignoring the amazing opening scene. Probably yeah, okay. my let's, favorite let's scene of the entire right, let's movie. Let's do that. Well, that well, hold on. Let me tell you my drinking rule. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're just so Drink excited, out. Mike. We're ready to explode. I'm sorry. I know, I know. But listen, there, we're going to talk a lot about cert, a certain repetitive thing. <laughs> And I bet you can't guess what it is. Crack yourself a beer and drink every time there's an explosion. Because through the runtime of this film, the hour and 40 minutes this thing runs, there are 37 explosions. <laughs> See, so glad I actually you counted. counted my, my count was in the 40s. So some of those you know, some, are shown from multiple angles. So I'm probably yeah. counting some more than others. But you know what? I don't care. I'm counting every single one. Well, I was going to say the hardcore drinking rule, I think, would be drink every time you see an explosion, which could be the same one, because yeah. some of them you see like four or five times. Yeah. And if you do oh. that, it's like it's like 50 explosions. It's bonkers. And it's great. <laughs> and that's all you need. Um, OK. Anyway, the movie kicks off. Jay, what the fuck happens? Ah, there's like just a crazy gun battle. Like it's a serious <laughs> shootout. Burning cars, police and cyberpunk bad guys. The uh, the I thought him, he immediately reminded me of Samurai Cop Dakota. Oh, he looks uh, exactly <laughs> like Samurai yeah. Cop. Hey, and um, Jay, I just I just have to say real quick that these cops and these bad, cyberpunk bad guys, not only are they just shooting at each other, but they are doing the '90s straight to video cliche of standing in front of readily available <laughs> cover and standing still while shooting at each other. Yes, they all have exploding bullets too. Oh, like they shoot a cop car with one bullet and then it just goes up. Oh, it's yeah. There's there's a point where it's like the Okay, so Dakota's it's is Dakota our hero's first day of work. He's the rookie cop, and it's his literal first day. And I love I love the the dress code for the rookie cops. They get the ponytails, they get the street clothes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but at some point they're surrounded by all like the Mad Max villains in this thing, and and he's like, Captain, we need some backup. And the captain's like, Yeah, we do. And then he just loads a new gun. <laughs> A, a, a non-regulation gun, and he just shoots bazooka missiles out of it. It's fucking insane. Hey, I, I got to stop you real quick, though, Mike. The very first line of dialogue by anyone yes. in the movie is Dakota. Yes! Yes! Shit! <laughs> right. You mean it's the second yeah, yeah. line of dialogue. Yes! <laughs> Shit! Shit! It is. <laughs> I, I wrote that down, too. That's so good. <laughs> I would say that this opening scene really sets the stage for how oh, this yeah. movie is. And that, that first explosion on the YouTube version, anyway, comes in. I mean, I'm, I'm counting the, the credits and the runtime here. But uh, if you want to fast forward to the first explosion, it's at three minutes, 50 seconds. Nice. <laughs> I, I feel like it's hard to believe that it's that late into the movie. Yeah, I know, I know, but it well, is. <laughs> the credits are like two minutes long, yeah. so like I think. It's, <laughs> um, but even I had paused it at some point, and I, I was at eighteen minutes when I had to pause it, and there was already thirteen explosions. <laughs> just the beginning of it is just hellfire. I just want to point out that, that we, as we mentioned, right after this giant gun scene of, of just explosions and cars and all this stuff happens, it just jump cuts in, in the YouTube version to this gratuitous sex scene. Oh. Just, <laughs> oh, yeah. just 30 to 45 seconds of just straight railing. Like, it's just insane. Well, I, I totally get it because the guy, I mean, this is our introduction to Slash. and uh, Sorry, the Slash actor, what? 
slash Gallagher. Slash Gallagher. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but but the actor who played Slash Gallagher wrote the movie. So yeah, did he? <laughs> the singer of the Counting Crows. <laughs> is did he join CrossFit? Is that who it is? Or I thought it was the I thought it was the guy from Corn. <laughs> 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 oh he, yeah he's this guy with like these big old dreads this like white guy with these long dreads and a goatee or something it's just you know i i don't God. know if i would classify slash gallagher as a great actor but you know what he's a really likable bad guy yeah it, and I, you feel like he's really trying like he's not phoning it in no no he's really he's trying doing, he's got a real good cheesy smile and everything it's fucking great <laughs> I, I mean, I totally rooted for him through the entire movie because he has a lot more, I mean, more to admire in his philosophy than the people who run the city of Los Angeles. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so, so <laughs> after the sex scene happens, and then it, ju- and then there's like a call to slash Gallagher at, at the uh, at postcoitus, which I believe is where the Amazon jumps to. It just jumps to him with a naked woman in his arms and a phone in his hand. <laughs> So there was a lot more foreplay before that phone call, John. I was wondering why there was just there was a, like an abrupt soft fade into it, and I was just like, uh, okay. Well, my first thought was like it was exactly like Samurai Cop, but then after that, I was just like, oh, okay, that's one shot, and then it just goes right back to Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, so Dakota's hanging out with some with the with the governor and his captain, right? And then, but but Slash has a plan, and. Uh, <laughs> Does anyone want to share this plan, this wonderful plan he has? I, I just know that it involves him stealing a bus with all of the old people on it. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even let him off the bus. He just get, steals it and tries to start ramming things. <laughs> he just takes out a bus shelter, just like people just flying everywhere. But like, so so Slash wants to like kill the governor Why? or whatever. Why does he want uh, to kill the governor? I don't. He wants to give the city of Los Angeles back to the people. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's He's what the he Bernie wants, yeah. Sanders of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> And that's why I rooted for him. <laughs> that's, but he steals a bus, and then it cuts to another car, another vehicle involved in that scene is like a giant fucking big rig that's <laughs> mad maxed out. Why isn't he driving that thing? Uh, and I love legs to ride the bus. <laughs> and, I, and I love that every other car you see on the street is just a regular car. There's people driving Mad Max vehicles. There's a smashed up bus, and everyone else is just kind of driving their father's Oldsmobile or something. And I, I also yeah. love how, like, as they're converging on the, the governor or whatever, the, that any time <laughs> a car gets even tapped or just, I mean, rammed, but it just explodes. Like, it just things oh, are exploding God. everywhere. And did you guys notice that uh, it's, for a second, it turns into a shot-for-shot remake of T2 Judgment Day? Oh, with yeah, the, the, top of the, with the lower one, it <laughs> slash pops up. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The, the top oh of the bus God. gets shaved off, yeah. and then he pops back up and he pushes the window out with one hand. <laughs> oh, I didn't catch that. With all oh. this chaos and destruction <laughs> happening, the governor is sitting in the back of this limo, just acting like this just happens every day. I'm as calm as shit. Everyone else is freaking out, and the governor is just like drinking a drink, making a phone call. He's having a it's his, it's his normal commute. But then, but then a giant Mad Max big rig <laughs> slams into your limo. Yeah, he didn't and, expect that. Um, there was okay. Did you guys catch? The, so the hen, the right hand man for Slash Gallagher is One Eye, <laughs> who's who's a bald man with an eye patch. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but he at some point like sneaks into like stealing a cop car. Did anything happen with that? No, no. I thought something would happen, and nothing had went nowhere. Did he just escape that way? Yeah, I Maybe. think he just escaped. Because he like, but there's still like 20 minutes of gunfight after this. It's <laughs> there's so much. The opening to this movie is so fucking bonkers. <laughs> yeah, no. I was just gonna say about the explosions. Like by the like around this point in the movie, like I was already dead to them. Like it, it's it's <laughs> it's like. This is this is totally like the wor- the worst comparison, but I feel like it's like when people talk about reading Blood Meridian, and they're just like, "Oh yeah, man, the violence in that movie, the violence in that book is just like so excessive that the, you'll you won't feel anything by the end of the book." And like that's the point where like I feel like this movie pulls that off in like ten minutes. <laughs> 
pyrotechnics budget in this film was <laughs> Jesus so much of the budget. Oh my God. Do you think they shot that before <laughs> or after? Because I fe- it has that feel of just like we got all these explosives laying around we didn't end up using in the rest of the shoot. Let's just oh, throw it all yeah. here. <laughs> Man, yeah, our pyrotechnics guy was really like budget sounds conscious. Like that's great. Might as well use them. <laughs> so Slash gets the governor and like there's this whole like standoff. Oh, <laughs> you guys are gonna play. Who's first? You're sick. Don't ever fucking call me sick. Do you understand me? I may be a little misunderstood, but I am not sick. And this is where they play their game. What's the game? Russian roulette. And Slash, Slash is gonna go first. Oh wait, wait a minute. He don't want to play that game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he decides not to. Well, Dakota does kick the crap out of him pretty quickly. After yeah. they agree to play Russian roulette. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> there, there's an explosive car chase. The governor gets shot in the head. There's there's a Russian roulette and then a, a fist fight all within like minutes. <laughs> and Dakota's captain gets shot and killed. Yeah. yeah. And he yeah, he takes a bullet for Dakota yeah. and dies. Yeah. I guess it's you kid. Are you responsible for him, Strickland? Son of a bitch. It's, I think it's supposed to be character motivation, but it's like he he's never mentioned again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's a huge bummer because he's one of the better actors in the movie. It's <laughs> yeah. true. Oh, he's great in it. Yeah. Uh, for the for the five minutes he's in. <laughs> uh, Can but, we play uh, a clip, though, of everything that Slash is guilty of on his trial? Because it's <laughs> a long whoever's list. Ed- <laughs> yeah, whoever's editing, go. Norman Gallagher. Alias leader of the world revolution, alias Vlad the Beast, alias Slash. You have been found guilty of kidnapping, extortion, armed robbery of a state treasury, assault and battery, assaulting an officer of the law, possession of illegal firearms, possession of stolen property, destruction of city property and municipal works, hijacking a city bus, assassination of a state official, treason, conspiracy to overthrow the government, and first degree murder. But yeah, John, how how do they uh, how do they deal with real baddies like this in the future? They they put him into like hologram seclusion. It's like it reminds me of like a genie lamp, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It looks like a little fuse, like you'd put in your car or something like that. But there's a man in it, <laughs> like a little misty man. <clears throat> And I, and I guess he just hangs out. He seems like he's aware. Yeah, it's <laughs> not like it's not like his consciousness is just uploaded to like a hard drive and they just stick it on a shelf. Like yeah, I think I get the idea that he's doing something. Yeah, like but I don't know what some sort of virtual prison because his body is in like a an, an ice freeze or something like that or some sort of stasis somewhere else. Mm-hmm. But they got him up on the mainframe in some way with this. Can, yeah, this, can, we, can we just say that none of this makes any sense whatsoever? <laughs> well, maybe if you don't have a degree in computer science, it doesn't make sense, Chris. <laughs> well, okay, I I understood it, but oh man. <laughs> You shall serve your sentence in holographic stasis until your biopersonal rectification programming is complete. Your first evaluation hearing is scheduled five years from today. So yeah, he gets sentenced, and this is all done by the governing body of California. Calcorp! (laughs) Which is a corporation! (laughs) This movie has so many, like capitalistic overtones in the sense of like the capitalist like <laughs> regime is running the com- the, the country it's very it's, cyberpunk <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> it's so good there's this like illuminati eye logo that gets <laughs> goes that's always around and it's so heavy-handed <laughs> Okay. It, and, and it's really confused ideologically. Like it, do, it doesn't make any sense because like on one hand it's like it's anti corporations but on, on the other hand it's like a like it feels like it's like a screaming libertarian just like shooting his gun off in his lawn. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Chris, there, there's a like team of people that c- allow this technology to happen. Um, <laughs> there is. Yeah. Since you have a degree in computer science, do you mind telling us all about how this works and the people involved? No, because it doesn't make any goddamn sense. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, they, on the one hand, on the one hand, they they put these people in this holographic prison, and then they show like one person who's served his sentence, and they're like putting him on parole or setting him free or do some bullshit. I feel like like an upstanding citizen. I only want to do good things. You were reprogrammed as a 
A street cleaner. Clean streets are safe streets, sir. And they make a mention about how they've reprogrammed all the bad shit out of his brain, I guess, or something. I don't know. It's almost so exactly the, like Demolition Man. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I've got a note even saying mm-hmm. this is like a shitty Demolition Man. Yeah. With more explosions. Which they reference later. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, that's true. <laughs> Though, I think Demolition Man came out the year after this. Well, I, I guess we saw it. which one copied which then. Yeah. <laughs> I think. I could be wrong. I might look that up. But no, but Chris, I was wanting you to tell me all about the old man and the daughter and, and then giggles. Oh, right. <laughs> J.F. Sebastian from Blade yes, Runner. That's right. Yeah. So you got the old man who's, I guess, invented this whole holographic prison thing and his daughter who is also banging Dakota. So you got to mm-hmm. have that connection there. And then you've got this, uh, I don't know, creepy guy with 160 IQ who is actually working for Slash Gallagher. But we don't really find that out till five minutes later, I guess. Yeah, no, not even five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> don't rush me, Cyclops. That it better not be an insult. Not only are you visually challenged, you're also cerebrally stunted as well. I understood that one, you little computer maggot. <laughs> yeah, they, they show him, he's like a dick in the office place, he's got a condom <laughs> on his head, and then he just it like just cuts to him, like, helping hack the mainframe for the bad guys. <laughs> and so he, doesn't he just, like, go on a break? <laughs> he just leaves, like, to go downstairs, that's where the bad guys are hanging out or something? Like, Apparently, it's got, I it have no far. idea the architecture of this fucking prison. It's got <laughs> everything. He pulled a Nedry from Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> yes. After the after Slash's <laughs> trial, they kind of skip about five years, and you yeah, see yeah. A, like a dome form over the city of Los Angeles. <laughs> Why is that? And I think there's f- flying cars. I don't know. Hey, there was hey, something. Hey, flying. John, you live in Los Angeles, right? What what part of the dome do you live in? <laughs> He lives in Cleveland. Yeah. Yeah, no, I live in Cleveland. Oh, what Cleveland. kind of dome do they have in Cleveland? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, but they, apparently there's been so much pollution in, in L.A. that they put a dome over it. Well, and um, here's the thing. To trap the pollution in. <laughs> yeah, to keep it inside, apparently. But, but notice, it's only part of L.A. It's like, all oh, the poor people can suck it. After, yeah. Okay, let me, let me just ask one thing here. The, the cops are shooting it out, right, with more bad guys, I think, or just after yeah. that five-year jump. And yeah. once again, it ends with a hostage situation. There are, like, <laughs> 20 hostage <laughs> situations. Oh, every, every fight scene ends with a hostage situation. Yeah, every one of them. Yeah. And this is the one where Dakota shoots the hostage, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Th- yeah. Yeah. And yeah. But there's also another thing that they uh, storyline they must have cut out of this or something. I wanted to see the uncut script of this because <laughs> during this scene, he notices like a tattoo on someone yeah, and yeah, realizes yeah. they're part of a gang or whatever. And that goes nowhere after that either. And no, it's, just, no. it's just like wh- there was so much in this movie that didn't make it because it was already an hour and 40 minutes when they <laughs> ended, finished editing. <laughs> uh, like, I'll, I'll be honest, like I've watched this movie three times in preparation for this because I kept feeling like I was going to forget something and I still can't remember the second act. No. <laughs> like I remember, I remember up to him seeing that tattoo and then it's all just gone until like the last five minutes of the movie. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's well, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll scratch your brain here a bit because after that scene is where we have the, uh, the parole or whatever you want to fucking call it. Yep. It's hearing yeah. for s- the tribunal or some sort of shit. Yeah. There's like, yeah. Battlestar Galactica style, like tr- tr- tribunal situation. <laughs> and so then, and then this is where like, there's that whole like heist sequence going on of, of Bob Newhart guy. Um, <laughs> I, I giggles. He, he was one of the uh, Derek's in Bob Newhart. Um, <laughs> thanks thanks I mean, for explaining that, Mike. I, I just realized, though, I didn't make the reference before that it's the I'm, guy from I'm Bob sure there's, Newhart. There's a huge, a huge portion of our audience watched the Bob Newhart show. Hey, <laughs> it's a classic. <laughs> um, but, like, he's, like, hacking the planet right there to get in there and, like, get into the mainframe. And somehow it's possible to steal his essence, I guess. Because, like, John, you said, like, he's, like, he's in a thing. He's his... Whatever it is is contained. Yeah, and he can like talk to you, yeah. and he's just kind of sitting in a void. <laughs> yeah. One eye, my trusted friend. It's good to hear your voice. Don't worry, boss. We're going to get you out of there. Where am I? Cyberspace. I accessed your disk and activated your helical consciousness program. The internet, the internet, I guess, in the future is proven to be a series of tubes in this because it like <laughs> bank bank check style, just like. 
shoots him through it apparently and then you know <laughs> when they hack him yeah they just can't contain him anymore he calls someone an intellectual sphincter and yes. they get the fuck out I was <laughs> hoping someone would say that I forgot to mention before too like the insubordinate guy that runs like the the cataloging system for all these criminals also repeatedly refers to himself as an extraordinary genius oh, yes. <laughs> like indignantly when anyone gives him shit throughout the movie he, he is so enjoyably annoying we call him giggles he's a regular genius i'm an extraordinary genius but slash is back he's ready to go i think he Wasn't literally it? says i'm back when he shows up in his own lair god i hope so <laughs> fucking hope so wait is this where slash comes out and gets his body back too Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love, like, okay, so he, if I remember this correctly, they have a machine that will turn him, make a body for him that'll look just like his body, <laughs> or really whoever's body he wants. Polymers are negatively charged. They'll contain your energy like a soda bottle holds in carbonated gas. The suit also gives you enough mass to manipulate physical objects. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, and he's got, like, a seam on his body, like... Because he just got pressed in this giant human-sized mold. And yeah. so he's got like a seam down his arm and on his shoulder. Um, my question, though, and maybe I'll just I'll just pass this to our guest, John, here. Uh, John, what, what do you think that mold was made for? Do you think it was custom-made? Or do you, think, do you think they were making life-size rubber dolls for people? He is a, no, he is a known name, you know, so... At least in Los Angeles, so I feel like you could make some money off of that. <laughs> they're, they're making Slash Gallagher sex dolls already. Like, that was part of so his he, thing. he inhabited, his soul inhabited a, one of his own sex dolls. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty dark. I, I mean, it sounds right. Like, he's creepy cut in this movie. It's it's yeah. kind of off-putting, honestly. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, he's got some curves to him. Yeah, like, before he's supposed to look like plastic, like, he already looks like plastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, okay, so this is where we find out that Slash has, like, a cool plan. He's going to kidnap some council members, and that they're he's going to make them help him do whatever the fuck he wants. His, his, his <laughs> I, manifesto. I still don't even really know what he's trying he, to, to do. I do, he says it right here. He says... He wants to make this city great again. He literally oh, yeah. says that. So well, maybe yeah. so, maybe someone had watched this movie and got an idea. <laughs> this could be the root of a lot of our problems right now. Oh, goodness. So, so Jay, you're saying make Los Angeles great again. Mm, Laga? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's uh, what, the, yeah, that's what Slash is trying to say. Yeah. The thing is, there's a problem that Giggles, our, our genius Giggles, <laughs> tells us it, tur <laughs> it turns out that the bad guys are just flat broke they can't do anything <laughs> hey, womp, womp. That, this is a problem easily solved oh how <laughs> bank robbers or bank oh. robberies whatever you want to say sure I guess you just drive a Mad Max car into a bank right <laughs> why not and while you're there murder a bunch of people just because oh yes okay wait a second this is another thing that I loved like, I, I, for some reason, I don't know, I just found myself really enjoying a lot of uh, Slash's just kind of throwaway lines. Oh, and, there's so many of them. And so, like, when the cops show up again and Dakota and, and Gallagher are face-to-face -face once again after he escapes, he pleads for the hostages, right? Yeah. And Slash says, you got to come up with something new to say. <laughs> 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 like, I just thought that was funny. I guess Slash, the guy who wrote the script, very much wrote so many fucking like kill lines for himself. Oh, he did just for sure. All over the place. Yeah, and I mean, really, he's kind of the only person with dialogue in the movie. Really, yeah. Like, because the rest of it is just shit and oh no from everyone else. Like, <laughs> it's like there are no other characters. He's the only person that has anything going on. Yeah, yeah. Dakota says like half has half of the dialogue. Maybe, oh yeah, right. And, like, you know, yeah, it's true. He has the most complex plot and like motivations and everything. So it, it really, like, I think he just was, like, writing the movie and he wanted to play that character. And, it, and that's why he gets so much of the screen time. Neil Breen or uh, Tommy Wiseau, like, any of these guys that, like, write these, like, prestige pieces in their mind for themselves. <laughs> where it's just like, ah, yes, not only am I a genius, but I'll save the world. And here are long monologues explaining how, yeah. vaguely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
But God. Slash is out there blowing <laughs> shit up, getting things done. He's not just talking about it. I mean, That's he's got some true. great lines, but he That's is a man true. of action. Yes, and we do see his butt as yeah. well in the uh, sex scene. So mm -hmm. he, he's basically Breen's just stealing, trying to steal his thunder. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, so they kind of leave this bank, right? Like, obviously, they needed to leave a building. So when you leave a building, you have to have a giant firefight. <laughs> of course. Okay, oh. listeners, there's so many times they go into a building, and when they come out of a building, there's a firefight. It's hard to remember which is which. This is the one where, like, they try, the, the police actually do start shooting hostages because they don't care about the people. They just so don't it's like, shit it, it, it makes you wonder, is Slash so wrong about some of the things he's saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is about where I started rooting for him. Yeah. So they start shooting him. The bullets go through him, and he, like, starts to melt. Jay, would you say, he's a goddamn ghost? He is. Yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is the part also where I wrote in my notes, which bears out again later. You know, I, I like the relationship between Dakota and Slash, because Slash really does not hate Dakota at all. <laughs> no, he's, in, he's into it. Yeah, he likes him, if anything. Yeah. He yells at him sometimes. It's an up and down, but you know, there's some ups. Yeah. Well, I don't want to gloss over this, Jay, because you mentioned that bullets, they, the cops start shooting Slash, and like it doesn't seem to be hurting him. And then a car explodes, it's this giant explosion, <laughs> and Slash just melts. You know, raised to the <laughs> Raiders of the Lost Ark style. Yeah. Then he just then he just fucking ghosts, like <laughs> literally. <laughs> <laughs> if you his body's just fucking negatively charged polymer. Mm hmm. <sighs> This is about where we get the uh, the midnight embezzling scene, right? Yeah, yes. this is where this is where we meet like Secretary Culkin. He's the guy that wants to do like actual good in the city. He wants supposedly wants to do like reform the social programs and help people and stuff like that. So Slash is wanting to like wants to make a deal with him for LA and help out the city and make it great again. Mm, Laga. <laughs> yeah. So Dakota shows up. And just, like, fucking kills one of the council members. What? Like, just throws him off the side. It's insane. Why would Dakota do that? Oh, Dakota. <laughs> but wait. Hold on. Wait, wait a, minute. a minute. Wait a minute. That's not Dakota. It wasn't Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just Slash, because apparently he can put any fucking plastic on his face. Wait, there's a, there's a huge demand for Dakota sex yeah. dolls, too. Listen, everyone's got a sex doll in the future. <laughs> <laughs> or everyone hey. is a sex doll. <laughs> that also could be, uh, if everyone becomes holograms and then they go and you know and embody their sex dolls yeah <laughs> so it is the, it is slash he kills the guy and then he, he takes a guy hostage takes one of the other council members hostage and he's wheeling him out in a wheelchair oh, and this is where this is where the drone the yes. drone shows up <laughs> and what's so special about the drone I, I don't, you know I, <clears throat> excuse me you brought this up you better fucking know <laughs> well, 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 okay, so somebody's got a baseball bat or something, right? So Slash... No, no it's, a, it's a shotgun. Is it a shotgun? Okay, I don't even know anyway. The explosions <laughs> blinded me. I couldn't quite make out what this was. <laughs> so Slash just walks up to this drone that's, like, recording them. It's floating in the middle of the air. And Slash <laughs> just, like, winds up like a baseball player and just knocks it out of the park. <laughs> the drone flies and hits a building. Just a huge explosion. <laughs> yep. this is the, uh, just another one of the count. It's it's like that that drone is probably lined oh. with more explosives than I will ever see in my lifetime. It just <laughs> imagine what they the would building. have done if they had CG explosions. Then, oh my god! Then uh, of course the cops show up. And there's another gun standoff. Oh, God, so and many of these. There's another hostage. God. And another hostage dies. Does he get shot again? Uh, it's a bomb. Oh, okay. <laughs> so wait, more explosions? It's a, it's, it's a hostage bomb. <laughs> Just, like, pushes this hostage out on the wheelchair, and then, like, the, the fucking partner just this, so oh, yeah. stupidly. Wait, P.S. Dakota had a partner. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't she worry. didn't do anything, and then she dies here. Uh, yeah. Yes. And what is? Does anybody remember what Dakota yells? He's wired or something like that. No, no. it's just he yells one word. What? Shit. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Uh, oh yeah, this is where we jump to my favorite scene in the movie. <laughs> they cut back to the bad guys like 
headquarters and they're all celebrating and it just cuts to the fucking <laughs> fucking henchmen shooting guns in the air and one guy with a flamethrower <laughs> just, just shooting it everywhere so okay it's so, so then stupid. natalie the girlfriend who works at the scientist person and dakota go to calcorp to see slash's body because calcorp his yeah, real body yeah 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 in the fridge because so i enjoyed this a lot because they think he's going to want his body so they find his body in the fridge and it's she's so like good. what are we going to do and, it, and dakota fills it full of holes <laughs> unloads his gun <laughs> right into the dead body of slash yeah so sure enough Slash does want his body and they battle their way in and he finds he finds uh his own body with bullet holes and just screams Dakota <laughs> <laughs> Which was great. Dakota! Yeah, well I mean there's a whole giant shootout in this warehouse. Of course, they, yes. They, they just, Let's just there's ten minutes of shooting. Yeah. Wait, uh, is this is this warehouse underneath the police station? Yes. Oh, it's it's a very, well no, it is the police station. It's an oh open God. industrial floor plan. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's a very modern police station. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dakota and Gallagher fight, which I thought was interesting that Gallagher won the fight. Well, how else would Dakota become, well... Dead. He's got to die. Yeah. It's the hero's journey. It's just like the Bible. <laughs> it really is. Wait, Dakota, wow. This is an allegory for the, the Christ Raising my score story. right there. <laughs> this, is, this works on so many levels. <laughs> it, well, and this is the kind of frustrating, like, bad movie that makes me feel weirdly sad sometimes when I'm watching it because it's just like I know how much effort went into it. Yeah, so, right. Yeah. yeah, like, like not on the writing end, but on like <laughs> this had to be an enormous crew and like people that were good at their jobs worked on this. Yeah. Well, like honestly, like for the time, the effects in it were pretty good. Like, there's a lot of practical yeah. effects that went it's in. It's definitely nine, 90s straight-to-video effects, but... I've seen way worse modern day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lost, watch the uh, watch Lost in Space with Gary Oldman. <laughs> oh, I did see that. That was the 90s thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, I had, uh, oh. like, Matt LeBlanc in it. Oh, God. Shit. Right. I did watch that in theaters. I don't oh, remember I'm anything so about sorry. it. <laughs> okay, so, so Dakota's de- basically dead, and the building is okay, listeners. Let's all say it together, listeners. the The building is going to explode. <laughs> yep. Now, hey, hey, let's just let's. Can we just think about how many holographic prisoners died in this explosion? Oh no, <laughs> the body That's count. True. I didn't oh, think has about to be that. Off the charts. That's very sad. Yeah, I mean, some of these people are probably in there for nonviolent offenses. They didn't deserve the death penalty. So Wait, hold on, hold I'm on. kind of against Slash here on this one, but... <laughs> hold, hold on, do you think in the future they're putting nonviolent criminals in holographic spaces? <laughs> Why yeah, wouldn't they? I mean, There's nothing but shoplifters. <laughs> you know what, though? Thinking about our current penal system, actually, you're probably right. There's probably a couple guys that were dealing some pot or something like that that were in there, and it's just like, oh, no. I think this this is probably the end game for the for-profit prison system. Yeah. yeah. They don't need they don't need a yeah. physical space. They just need to run yeah. some servers somewhere to keep some people alive. Yeah, I feel like they're probably just using their consciousnesses to, like, data mine Bitcoin oh, or yeah. whatever's in the future. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh, fuck, John! John! <laughs> That's a good idea for a movie, actually. <laughs> so, so Doc, uh, the the daughter of the doctor, who's also a scientist and knows the technology, of course, she puts Dakota. She, the the bombs are counting down. She's got like three minutes, and she somehow <laughs> steals his soul into it, a thing or whatever the fuck you do with it. You okay. Hot. Let's get the hell out of here. Yeah, let's go. And then they escape by the, the skin of their teeth. Can we talk about how she survives the explosions? Yes, please. So she hides out of one of the places, one of the, the coffins they store these the, the 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 bodies in for the people who are turned into holograms. Yeah. So, the, so, so the holographic consciousness has died, but the bodies are still there. And <laughs> she survived by hiding out with one of those. Do you think the bodies die when their holographic consciences go away? Yeah, I think by uh, the holographic, uh, Isaac Asimov's uh, three rules of holograms. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> those they, they classic die. classic <laughs> rules. I remember those. Um, okay, so... You want to recite them, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, rule number one. <laughs> if you're a hologram, you must be interlaced. <laughs> rule, num- rule number two. 
Uh, never hurt a non hologram. <laughs> hologram three. Uh, sex dolls are cool. <laughs> Literally speaking of sex dolls, <laughs> um, the the doctor daughter, the girlfriend of Dakota. I think we're going with my favorite part. Yeah, well, don't worry. Second well, you get to part. talk about it. Dakota's hologram come back to the house where she also puts you know negative charged polymers on him and makes <laughs> gives him a body. No, no they're not <laughs> polymers though, are they? It's just makeup. It's goop. Well, <laughs> she just no, no, put she makeup puts, on him. No, she, well, yeah, it's neg- well, no, she, she she says it's negatively charged stage makeup. Yeah, but it's it's yeah. it's still she dips her hand in like everyone does in the beginning. We didn't mention that, but everyone dips their hand in the fucking polymer plastic and it like, you know, they everyone's got that scene. Right. Hey, hey, Paul. So you might have a little insight into, into this since you are part of the hologram world now. Do you think she applied that negatively charged stage makeup to Dakota's dick? You got to apply that theater goop if you want to make the other goop. Oh, 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 yes. oh my God. Oh, Paul. Oh. Oh. This is why we don't let him out of hologram. Oh. Yeah. Can we just yeah. can we just edit in another explosion to clear our ears? Beautiful, beautiful. That was great. Anyway, yeah, so she puts makeup on him and all that kind of stuff. But then... He, he, he sets off all the appliances with his boner. Because... <laughs> little blender action. Because they get down, and and those every appliance in the house turns on. <laughs> <laughs> Their sex is that good. Think of the, think of the possibilities. I'm just thinking of the end of Tammy and the T-Rex still. Like, I still can't picture it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, very similar. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. And then, so what? Dakota meets up with the president. The president wants to just oh. kill a bunch of people. Well, he, but, no, he declares martial law over L.A. and then literally says, I am the law. <laughs> so throwing out the Judge Dredd reference. The so Judge Dredd, yep, yep. And then um, Dakota talks back and he to the president, and he says that Dakota just earned himself a firing squad. And then Dakota, like, pulls his face <laughs> off. Off. Yeah. And reveals he's a hologram. <laughs> and he vows to get rid of Slash his way. But then Natalie reveals that Slash is actually more powerful because blah, 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 hologram yeah. science. His, his hologram is a lot tougher. Slash's hologram has a much more robust power base than yours. I didn't have a chance to fully ionize your particles before the explosion. You mean Slash is more powerful than me? Yeah, and he could theoretically destroy you. And then, okay, so this is funny. The president is at his home, right? And he's like smoking a cigar or something, just yeah. looking out the window. And then the one-eyed henchman walks right into his living room with a gun. Like, there's no guards, there's nothing. So I'm like, okay, I guess he's well, kidnapped now. I think, I think most of the police in the city by now are dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There so can't like, be that That was left. really easy. And then they, they capture the president, Slash does, and then Slash kills him and takes over, and that's the end of the movie. The movie, movie over. There Movie's over. That's it. That's Credits it. roll. So, so is it a happy no. ending? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> There's one more shootout. And it's Dakota. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the president. <laughs> he like looks like the president and like wore his skin just to get yeah. inside Slash's yeah. area. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, there's a really good line right here. So so one eye, the guy with the uh, the, the, eye bat, uh, the eye patch, <laughs> says, wait, you're not Jameson. And then Dakota goes, Good eye, <laughs> and then <laughs> and then shoves Dakota in that like polymer press and no, sh- like kills eye. him that way. One eye, sorry, yeah, what well, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was one of the yeah. cooler deaths. He puts him in the in the sex doll creating machine, <laughs> yeah. and then when he comes out, like his head is just a lump of runny skin. Yeah, well, I think I think this is where Slash is is really bored of killing all the cops in the city, and so he just leaves and goes upstairs to fight Dakota. Yeah, finally. So, yeah, I mean, he doesn't even really know Dakota's up there. He just goes up there for some I think reason. They, I think they have a connection, an electric connection. Oh, you know what? They Yeah, yeah. that's probably it. It's a <laughs> holographic touch. Um, but this is also... <laughs> I'm excited because the flamethrower guy finally says something. <laughs> yes. He's been in like the background of a lot of scenes, just always shooting his flamethrower. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Which, if you want to play hardcore drinking rules, I think that counts as an explosion. Uh, he says something. I don't have written out what it is. I forget. He's like, I'm here, boss, or something stupid like that. And then he like melts Dakota. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
They have a uh, hologram leotard fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My therapist tells me I carry around a lot of inner hostility. What do you think? Can it kill me, Slash? I'm like you. Really? <laughs> Oh, and, yeah. and, you know, before we forget, for all you WWE fans out there, ooh, uh, ooh. Zeus was in this, and this is where <laughs> Zeus gets shot and killed. Oh, yeah, 8-Ball. Uh, we didn't talk about 8-Ball at all, did we? Yeah, there's Zeus is in it. Zeus is in the movie. Okay, that's yeah. all that matters. It, yeah, instead of having a Z shaved into the side of his head and his hair, he's got an 8 tattooed on his forehead. Yep. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's how you but tell the difference between the characters. He's, he's dead at this point. <laughs> all right, so Slash and Dakota are fighting as holograms, and it's fucking cool as hell because they're holograms. <laughs> I, I don't know, John. Do you remember how they how this uh, wraps up? Doesn't he like he like throws him into like that like this portal into thing? the chamber thing? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that then like destroys him. Doesn't? Oh wait, no. Then he like shoots it, right? Yeah, he shoves his fingers yeah. into like a computer, and then like yeah. electrically turns it on. No, he turns it on because he can use the keyboard, right? All I know is that it involves an explosion. Yeah. Well, he, like, sucks him into the thing. No, he, yeah, like, sucks Yeah, yeah, yeah. He puts Slash into the, like, hologram maker, and he's in the little test tube again, and then Dakota blows up that machine. Yeah, and just gets fucking ready. Yeah. And then... <laughs> then the greatest ending scene of all time. Oh, my God, it's so good. <laughs> what was it, Chris? Oh, well, the uh, Dakota goes to talk to the mayor, who's still alive, really, and I think yeah. the mayor is in his limo or something. Mm-hmm. And the mayor says that the martial law will be in effect indefinitely, but Dakota will be the mayor's right hand man. But mm-hmm. but Dakota replies, "My duty is to end this shit here and now." <laughs> <laughs> and that explodes the president. <laughs> it's so <laughs> good. <laughs> yes, that he assassinates the president. My duty is to end this shit here and now. <laughs> but the best part, uh huh. Wait, is the the girl. Wait, can we act? Th- can we act this out? <laughs> all right, you two do it, Chris. Or Jay, you have the first line. Chris, you have the final line. <laughs> okay, Chris, you're Dakota. Okay, all right. So Natalie w- walks up at the girlfriend and says to Dakota, "What are we gonna do now?" Dakota turns seriously towards her <laughs> and says, <laughs> "Vote." <laughs> <laughs> That's credits. This whole fucking thing was about voting. <laughs> and then oh. Dakota walks off screen, and then the credits oh roll. My <laughs> oh, my oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Oh, it's so amazing. <laughs> oh. oh, it just—it's all about voting. Holy sh- shit! Hello. Paul? Holy shit, Paul! Paul! Oh, Paul! You look. Hi guys, what's going on? You look different. <laughs> Who let him out of the hologram world? God damn it! Hey John, what's up? <laughs> hey, what's up? Yeah, um, I'm real sorry about that. I've had kind of an interesting day. Uh, all sorts of weird things going on with. I don't know. I was in some weird chamber, but I'm okay now. Well, that's good. Mm. Paul, uh, yeah. Paul, um, <laughs> it's it's nice that you're out of your holographic form. Um, because we're about to do ratings. Oh, very cool. Hey, first, Paul. Yeah. Are you going to vote this year? <laughs> am I Am I going to vote this year? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. All right. Good. You, yeah. Good. I, I'm glad you watched Hologram Man. <laughs> oh, I did. I did. That's why I'm excited to give my rating. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's settle down. Uncle Lloydy, let's do some ratings. Rating time. I mean, obviously, the answer is we're rating this in explosions. All right. <laughs> of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Gotta do it. Yeah. All right. Chris Hudson. Well, yeah. I think that I think I overall, I enjoyed the movie. It, there were a lot of great lines. Though I slash. I thought the ending was classic. I love that this is this whole thing was just a PSA for voting. I wish more of America <laughs> had watched this movie before the election a couple of years ago. But hey, this, this isn't everyone's. <laughs> mm, Laga. <laughs> this, this movie, <laughs> this this movie isn't everyone's cup of tea. I mean, th- I loved all the explosions. I thought they just got better and better the more that were in the movie. But you know, the, all the fighting scenes were a little cut and cut and paste. They all blended together, and it's hard to lo- it's easy to lose track. So, uh, but I'm going to give this a good, uh, I think, seventy explosions. Very nice. 
Uh, Jason Hulls, what are you saying? Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I think this movie is a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed Slash. Yeah, I, I, yes, the the... After a while, the violence in the movie just doesn't have any context anymore, and it bleeds together, and it just becomes a big mess. But overall, I think it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. So um, I'm going to go 88 Explosions. Well, ooh. Nice. All right. Mr. John Nix. I, I, en- I enjoyed it, and I think that there are a lot of really good uh, like moments throughout it. But I think that it has that problem that a lot of like almost good bad movies have where like the second act is like just too much of a slog and kind of <laughs> like, like you said, bleeds together a little too much mm-hmm. to make it great uh, and like really rewatchable. Um, so I'm going to have to go 65 explosions. Very nice. All right. Non hologram Paul Brooks. What are you saying? Yes. Yes. Well, I have to pretty much agree with uh, what everyone else has said. Uh, A fun watch, not the sort of thing that you take too seriously. You know, you go into it kind of thinking, well, it's called Hologram Man, so... (laughs) (laughs) You you know what you're down uh, for. (laughs) But uh, I am going to have to knock it down just a couple points because of my... uh, uh, quite frankly, traumatic experiences uh, of today. <laughs> so I'm going to say uh, a solid 74 explosions. <laughs> well, it was a rough day, guys. It was a rough day. Uh, it's fair. It's fair. Uh, we'll have to, you'll have to tell us sometime about how that went sure. on. But uh, um, well, for myself, um, I, I can echo everything everyone said, um, though I felt myself the whole time just wondering how the fuck is this happening like still because it is repetitive but it's like high octane repetition in my brain and and i a lot of the time thought man i want to make other people watch this movie so i'm going to try to bring up the points a little bit because as jason i'm going to quote jason holes from dr otto this is this is the kind of movie this podcast is for Mm -hmm. uh I'm going to give it a little bit of a 95 explosions. Nice. Whoa. Wow. Nice. Not a hundred, but up I, that average. I really like, I had a lot of fun. Yeah, it is fun. I, I, I should say like, I would watch this again. Some of the movies I'm like, you know, okay, I could, I could use a break. This one, I could go into this one again pretty easily. Oh uh, shit. Well, why don't we, John, we got you here. Why don't we talk to you real quick about uh, some of the projects you've got going on since you are a, a filmmaker. Yeah, sure. Um, you've got you've got a wrestling film that ha- you've you've got coming out, or no, it just did come out. I'm sorry to sound dumb. No, 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 it's fine. Um, we shot a wrestling thriller this past summer uh, named Powerbomb. I was assistant director and editor on it, uh, and we're just finishing it up. So we're going to be starting to look for distribution soon. So that should be out uh, hopefully sooner than later. Now, what is a wrestling thriller? Like I, I, I'm familiar with like a wrestling film in general, but a thriller makes it seem extra exciting. Uh, basically it's about like an obsessive fan that kidnaps his favorite indie wrestler and then sort of like, <laughs> All right. I, and, I, and like, since, since I didn't, uh, like write or direct it, I don't know how much they want me to like reveal about the plot, sure, but that's sure. basically what it that is. Sounds it's good. sort of yeah. about, yeah, it's sort of about like the, um, just like the worst aspects of like fan culture. Okay. That sounds so good. Paul Brooks then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I'm the worst. <laughs> And then you've got a music doc coming out too, right? Yeah, yeah. We've been working on a music documentary for about uh, a little over three years. Um, so we're just finishing that up too. And I'm not exactly sure where that's going to land right now. Uh, I should know more in like a month. So I wish I could say more about it. But All right. Well, well hey, Ma- Mike, I want to I wanna mention you guys should uh, follow John on Instagram because he stayed uh, at my place here in Los Angeles uh, last month, I think, and took a lot of great... Uh, photos that he uh, posts on his Instagram. So you should probably check that out. Yeah, well, I was just about to say, like, uh, John's production company is Turnstile Films. So check them out. I know they're on social media. I follow them uh, on a couple different platforms. So you got what, Facebook and Twitter and all that kind of shit, right? Yeah, fa- Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Yeah. Uh, and you can follow that, like that company at, uh, at Turnstile, uh, spelled with a Y, Films. Yeah, and then and then mine is at John Nix Film on all platforms. Sweet. So it's pretty easy to find. Nice. John with no H. Yeah, fuck H's, man. <laughs> Unnecessary. You don't need it. <laughs> no, it's too many letters. Boy, 
I guess that's that, right, guys? We did it. We sure did. Paul, put in the uh, put in the biggest explosion sound file you can find right here. <laughs> oh, Paul, spoiler! You're gonna do that a lot throughout this fucking podcast. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> On the next episode of B-Movie Mania. Okay, guys, question. What if Neil Breen directed and starred in the movie Taken? Oh, no, what? Oh, boy. (laughs) What? (laughs) The world may never know, but I think my pick is about as close as you can come to that vision. (laughs) We are going to watch international martial arts sensation Ron Marchini and Adam West go head-to-head in the high-octane action thrill ride Return Fire Jungle Wolf 2. (laughs) What the fuck is that title? What the fuck is that? Yeah, that's a great question. You may ask, what is that? This is a hard, hard movie to find. This, it's only on YouTube, and it, it never even came out on DVD. Like this is this is deep. This is deep. But yeah, Ron Marchini, um, I guess, fought Chuck Norris, and Chuck beat him by a half a point, and said that Marchini was one of the toughest guys he ever fought. Where does Adam so, West? Wow. Uh, how does Adam West stack up on that, Jay? Yeah, <laughs> what's West numbers? Uh, you know, I'm gonna have to tweet at Chuck and find out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydy? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out. Touch them. They are touching themselves. And they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! All right. Well, everyone, thank you for listening. John, thank you for being on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, of course. Follow us on, on Twitter and Facebook. You can find us, B Movie Mania. Uh, was it Twitter with BMM Podcast on Twitter. We've got a, a store. You can buy some really sweet shirts. We've got just everything. Come check us out. Subscribe. Listen. Give us some love. Talk to us. The Facebook page could use some talking. Hey, and, and I'm wearing one of the shirts right now. It's very comfortable. It's very comfortable. <laughs> it is a really nice shirt. I'm holding it up so you guys can see it. Yeah? <laughs> if we get 500 more likes on Facebook, we will turn ourselves into holograms. No, don't do No, it's not fun. No, don't do it. Be, well, that's what we're going to yeah, do. But, but 500 likes, Paul. Come on. Okay, yeah, yeah. We'll turn Paul into a sex doll. We'll turn Paul into a sex doll if we get 500 more likes. Uh, <laughs> and later. Bye. Um, Everyone in Los Angeles has them. Sex doll. <laughs>